Welcome to a special online edition of Open Door Cleveland. Today's guest is real estate professional Eleni Barkley-Jones. We'll explore the roots of her career in residential real estate and why owning a home may be a benefit to you. Welcome to Open Door, Vince Robinson, and I am talking with Eleni Barkley-Jones. She is a real estate professional in the Cleveland area and has been for quite some time. Welcome to Open Door, Eleni. Thank you, Vince, and thank you for having me. You know, we were talking before we started this interview, and you were telling me some of your history as a person involved in real estate. I found it quite fascinating. Tell us uh, about your history uh, as a real estate agent. Okay. Um, When I was just a child, my father had a real estate company. And when he first started out, it was called Blackman Realty. And when he first started out, he started out in our home. And I was, uh, how old was I? I was about 11 when he first started. And I was so concerned about his desk because I'd come in there and he'd have papers everywhere. So Uh, To help my father, I would go and straighten out the papers on his desk. So I took everything and put them all together in one big pile neatly in the corner and and put a book on top of it. So it just looked real neat. But I didn't know that I was mixing everybody's files together. So that was my beginning when I learned the difference between uh, files and piles so uh, I had Mrs. Caper's file in, in Mr. Johnson's pile, you know, so that was my start. But then my father got his broker's license when I was 13. And then I started helping him with clients um, going to the customer's houses when their house, when their deals closed and give them a, 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 a gift a purchase for purchasing with our company and then uh, my father passed and when he passed uh it i then got my license and so i was not able to work uh for him however i uh i worked in his memory so i then became a real estate broker but um, before I became a real estate broker, of course, uh, everybody knows I have a daughter named Michelle. Everybody knows Michelle Clark. She worked for me as a little girl, just like I worked for my father now. Uh, in those days, we call that the olden days or golden days or whatever. But in those days, you did not need to have a license to help with the customer. So I would tell my daughter, you know, call and make this appointment and, and talk to this person and whatever. And I was so astonished at how her vocabulary, her real estate understanding was, even when she was like nine years old, she was helping me. So, um, and then I went on to, to, you know, get my broker's license and, um, that was over 30 years ago. But within that, I wanted to become a real estate appraiser as well. Now, when I first wanted to become a real estate appraiser, you did not need a license. So I was appraising real estate. But then when you needed a license to appraise real estate, I went to uh, the county and became a an appraiser with the county. And um, since I was appraising with the county, I did that for four years. So I appraised all of the houses in the uh, the county of Cuyahoga. So uh, when I did that, then I was able to uh, have enough credits to then become a licensed appraiser for the state of Ohio. And I was the first African-American female to be a licensed appraiser in the state of Ohio. So And then during all this course, you know, of course, the time, then I was the first to market the new houses in Cleveland because for a long time, for like 50 years, we didn't have any new construction in Cleveland. So the first uh, new house built in the city of Cleveland was built right off 140th and Kinsman. And so I was the marketeer for that. And then I started doing developments like the Catherine Tyler. Um, I did the 
Catherine Tyler expansion with the with the addition to the building and the new houses around it. I did that. I wrote the proposal and got millions, a million plus dollars to to uh, develop that and a lot of other projects around the city. Okay, so suffice it to say you have a long history of involvement in in real estate. Um, Today's show, we're we're really talking about uh, what we can do to prepare ourselves for a future in relation to our finances. And we've talked about investing in cryptocurrencies and and foreign uh, currencies. We've talked about uh, precious metals. But another one of the vehicles that people have used traditionally to create and generate wealth is real estate. Can you talk to us about how real estate can be used as as a way to generate income and and, uh, sustain one's life? That's a very good question. Um, It's it's a very important topic to talk about because everybody, everybody you know, Vince, and everybody that I know lives in some form of real estate, even if it's a tent on some land in the backyard. You live on some real estate and that's the only real estate that we have. So it's important to own your own. It's important to strive to own your own, not just for the security of it and the the feeling that you get from owning it, but then there's appreciation so the the property will go up in value but but what it does for your spirit is very important to own it i remember that when i first started since i started young i didn't own real estate when i first started selling it and there was a feeling inside of me that i was just not adequate because i didn't own something i was trying to sell you that's just like you trying to sell me a car and you don't know anything about a car you never owned a car and i remember when i got my uh, a nice little uh income tax check and i was uh, selling real estate part-time and i was working and uh, one of the men that worked with me suggested that I buy a house with my money. Now, my parents own their own house. My sister had income property. But I felt, I don't know, I was afraid to do it. Even though I had good credit and I had this income tax check that could have been my down payment, I was afraid to do it because I was a young woman and I, you know, I was not married and I just didn't feel that I... I was competent to to own a house, but uh, I just want to tell, and we have some brave young sisters out there now, but I just want to tell everybody, you can do it. Just get a mentor who who can help you. It's not that hard. For one, it's not hard to get the property, and two, it's not hard to maintain it as long as you are the type of person who pays attention to what's going on, because you have to do that. Uh, I just walked around to the side of my house just now with an electrician because I want some electrical work done, need some lights on the outside and all. And I noticed that my gutter had come loose. So, you know, you have to pay attention to what's going on with your property. And that's not that hard. It's just looking just paying attention. So it's not a big deal. I'm going to go to Home Depot and get an adapter and I'm going to hook that particular gutter up to my rain barrel. So this is a godsend that we had this big storm, knock my gutter loose. Now it's, it's, I have to fix it. So I'm going to attach it to my rain barrel and then I'll have water that I can use for my plants. So, uh, I'm rambling. Uh, what was your question? <laughs> well, I, I guess what I'm really trying to get to uh, is the benefit of, of home ownership. And, and I have to ask the question based on the economic situation that the, that we're in right now. A lot of people are seeing uh, a decline in their income. Some people have completely lost their jobs and so forth and so on. Uh, but you're talking about the advantage of, of home ownership. You know, what can we do right now for those who who want to have a home or want to uh, purchase some property, but they're dealing with uh, the economic realities at present? Okay, that's a very good question, too. So please do not feel um, anybody, nobody, please don't despair with your situation, because you have to understand that it's not just you. 
There are homeowners who feel the same way. There are people who might be looking after their grandmother's house who are tired of that house. It's driving them crazy. It's draining them. And they might have lost their job. So they don't need that house. They can't handle that house. That could be the perfect house for you. So what we have to do is find those people. Those people need to call me, 216 800 1061. And then Vince, I will call you and then we'll have a network and make sure that our people get in the houses because you don't always need to get financed to purchase a home. Please write that down. You don't always need to get finance from an institution to purchase a home. Because you, there is another way to do it. There's a land contract. There's a lease with the option to buy. There's other ways to buy a house. So don't feel despair when you're going through things. Sometimes these, you think they're stumbling blocks, but they're stepping stones to get you to another place. So don't, don't, don't ever feel like you're alone in this. And yes, it's hard right now, but you are alive and you're strong enough to handle it. As long as you're waking up with breath and, and with the right mind, you can handle what is going on right now. Okay, so what I'm hearing you say is that there are non-traditional ways to acquire property and yes. you, you have an awareness of, of some of those ways. You know, one, one thing that I'm seeing also is that sometimes we have properties in our families, you know, grandmother, grandfather lived in the house for 40, 50 years or whatever. And then they transition and then the house is left to those who are left behind. And many times people don't want the responsibility for the house or they look at it as a, as a way to get some quick cash and they sell the property. Uh, what are your thoughts about folks who don't keep those properties in the family? Well, and the way you stress that, don't keep the properties in the family. It's important for us to build a legacy for our family. That is important. And that is one thing that our people do not do. Our people traditionally have not had the resources or the opportunity or even the mindset to leave a legacy for their children. So I'm stressing you now, and, and uh, we have a daycare center it's called Family First. We teach the children financial literacy. They teach their children financial literacy. We have to do the same with our children. So I have a booklet for children to read about financial literacy, but we do have to leave a legacy, leave something for your, for your children. But if you do not have any children and if your children don't want the house that grandma once owned and they already have a house and they don't want extra property, then they will want to sell it. They will want to sell it. And that's where you come in, where you might help them. Uh, you're not, you're not, uh, qualified to get a loan at a bank, but you can get into a, a contractual arrange, arrangement with them, an agreement with them where you would pay them back until you get on your feet. Say you, you hold it for, for five years until you're able to clean up your credit. And then you go and get the, the loan for the property. So there's different ways. So if you could, my number is 216-800- 1061. Give me a call and we can work it out because there's, there's always a way. There's always a way. Now you can lay some new asphalt on your driveway, get some new asphalt and cover up uh, your bad driveway and it looks beautiful. But a year or two from there, you'll see a little, little plant growing up from the asphalt. It found a way. And if that little plant can find a way with its limited understanding, we can do it. We can survive. We can uh, we can achieve what we want, just like that little plant. OK, so we've talked about acquiring uh, property. Uh, how do you make money in real estate? Because, again, the focus of this show is how we can create and generate wealth. How can you make money with real estate, either as someone who uh, goes in as you do and, and buys and sells properties or someone who perhaps uh, owns a number of properties that, that generate uh, income through rent payments. How can folks make money with real estate? 
Well, those those ways. Well, first off, let's start with the smallest uh, amount. You can save money when you own your own property, unless you already have a house that 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 you're staying in for free because it was your grandmother's and she she won't charge you rent or whatever. If you are paying rent, you can save money by buying a property because the mortgage payment will be less than the rental payment. So that's one way to save. Now, how to make money is say you buy a property and you they 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 call it sweat equity. Suppose you buy this property and you know it needs painting and it might need new cabinets. And that's a, a function of tearing the old cabinets down and putting new ones in. Little simple stuff. You can get a property, paint it up, fix it up, get it nice, and then resell it. Or stay in it for a year or two. Save your money because you, you, you're you paying less than you were for rent. Fix it up and then sell it. Okay. They call that mm-hmm. flipping, right? Well, I don't want to use that term flipping because when they felt like um, picking with us, then, then they started jumping on, on real estate agents for what they call it flipping. But it happens all the time. So you just have to do it within the proper guidelines. Mm-hmm. Well, and I think but, key in that scenario uh, is that you don't develop an emotional attachment to the property. If you are going to be an investor, no, it's just business. If it's your house, then of course you're going to be emotional. You're going to love that that deck that you put the floor in and you're going to love the, you know, the carpet that you got Berber carpet and you really love it. And, you, you know, the colors just match your furniture. But if you are an investor, you're not going to be in love with the property. You You want to enhance the property and make it nice for someone else. And then you want to make a profit off of it. So and now there's another way uh, if you buy income property and you you get a house and you want to rent it to someone else then you're going to put your love in that because you want to en- enhance the property to the to the degree that you will get a good tenant because every tenant ain't a good tenant now if you have a property that you just throw it together and then um look for somebody to to rent it from you you're going to get the type of person who would settle for a house that's thrown together so then that type of person might not be the tenant you want because then they are if they can accept a house that's thrown together then that might be the way they might live so you don't you want to get a house fix it up nice and you'll get somebody who appreciates a nice house and what does appreciate mean appreciate means they make it better so if you appreciate the house that you're living in, you're going to make it better. How you make it better, you pay your rent on time. You don't tear it up. You know, you 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 make it better by by paying the landlord and then the landlord can then make some uh some improvements to the property. Okay. You know, so uh you you if you're going to do income property, make sure you fix it up yes. so that it's worthy of a good tenant. Okay, so uh, what you're going to see in some situations is that folks don't want to deal with having tenants and having folks tear their property up and so forth and so on. Or they don't want to be bothered with being connected to the the routine maintenance that's required. Uh, There are other ways that you can make money. And I'm thinking of a real estate uh, investment trust. Uh, Do you have any advice for for folks who might want to pursue that as a means of making money through real estate versus the typical uh, landlord tenant situation. If I understand your court, uh, question correctly, um, you can, if you, if you're talking about rental property and you not, um, you not being the one that maintains it, you just have an, an vested interest in it. And then you're with another group of people and then they, they hire it out to a management company that they manage it and the money goes into a, a pot and everybody shares it. Well, you just have to find the right management company. That's what's very important in that equation is finding a, the right conscientious 
management company. And then there's going to be fees associated with that. So, yeah, that's better if you don't want the headache and you don't want to go knocking on people's doors. <laughs> I remember when I was young, my mother went to her her rental property with a shotgun and <laughs> and my mother was so calm and and docile and sweet but when she went to go get her rent she took her shotgun with her i'm like wow she's a g but you don't want to get into any kind of situation like that so that's why you want to have good tenants so you have good property but if you have a lot and and there's you're with a group and there's you're getting these multi-units and and then of course you're going to have a whole team you're going to have a management a whole system of, of maintenance and and someone over over him a property manager and somebody over that one because you have more than one property so yeah there's a there there are there are several ways to deal with Uh, owning real estate and but we know we all know that real estate is one of the key ways that people become rich in this country i mean just look at the president that we have that's how he became rich he worked with his father and then then he started acquiring real estate so that's the foundation real estate is the foundation because it's real it's a real estate it's real you can touch it you can feel it you can so yeah so It is a wonderful way. I mean, they talk about basketball and 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 doing hair and all that. Those are other ways. Entertainment is another way, and real estate is up there in that list of ways to make money okay. in this so, country. There you have it. It's uh, another tool that you can put in your tool belt in terms of acquiring and generating wealth. Uh, Elon Nee, thanks for joining us on Open Door Cleveland. And uh, you've given out your phone number of, a few times, but I'll invite you to do it one more time. 216-800-1061. And I just want to say, Vince, if I have a minute, um, I, my with me selling real estate, I learned that it's more than the house. I learned to... Uh, engage and gather and uh, inspire our people so that's where I got all that from by selling real estate I knew families needed help and then I started Project Unity and now I have the How Institute uh, H-O-W uh, means handwriting on the wall or another way you can look at it is helping others win and that's my whole focus in life at this time is to make sure we win as people All right. Well, with that, we'd like to thank you again for joining us on Open Door and thank you for listening. Know yourself, love yourself, be yourself. Make it a great day, Cleveland. Peace. Peace.